Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin <laughs> Hazrat Abu Bakr, Umar Usman wa Ali wa ala Bakr sahabat sahabin ridwan Allah ta'ala alayhi majma'in Ya yuhal mu'minul hazirun Itakul Allah ta'ala wa tirmin al-lazina ka wal-lazina hum muhsinun Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina al-anbiya imal mursalin Sayyidina maulana muhammadin wa la alihi wa sahabi ajma'in All praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The Lord of the universes all praises are due to he who has created Adam from water and clay. All praises are due to he who has honored the children of Adam. All praises are due to he who sent the most honored one in divine presence, Sayyidina Muhammad as a mercy to all the universes. And may all peace and blessings be upon the crown of creation, the beloved of Allah, the master of the Arabs and the Ajam the Sultan of the Prophets, the grandfather of Hassan and Hussein, and upon his noble family and blessed companions, especially upon the Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Usman al-Ghani, and Hazrat Ali al-Murtaza, and all those who follow them with sincerity until the last day. O believers, welcome to you in this holy day of Juma on the 28th day of Muharram. Inshallah Rahman, on Sunday night, we will be saying farewell to the sacred month of Muharram. And we'll be entering into the month of Safar. Believers must be careful in the days of Safar. As our Shaykh Sahib al Sayyaf is warning us, saying, we are entering into the second month of the Islamic calendar, the month of Safar. The month of Safar where so many incidents are coming down. Believers must be careful. Safar is always coming down with its heaviness and with the punishments. The nation of Muhammad wasalam, must be careful. The whole month this year may hit left and right. In Safar, 700,000 curses and punishments. They are removed 
the, from the Lahul Mahfuz and coming down to the first level of the sky. During that month, that heaviness is coming down and whatever incident is going to happen to people during that whole year, from this Safar to the following year's month of Safar, whatever curses and punishments are going to reach to people, it's coming down. O believers, wake up. Wake up to be in awakening stations and stay away from the anger and the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how do we stay out of Allah's anger? We must become thankful servants of Allah. Just as the Holy Prophet ﷺ was once staying up the whole night in tahajjud prayer until his whole foot, his feet, they became swollen, his wife asked him, Ya Rasulullah, why do you do this when you are free from any mistakes or sin? And the Holy Prophet ﷺ said to her, Shouldn't I be a thankful servant? That is the sunnah of our Holy Prophet, to be thankful. Whose sunnah is it to be ungrateful? It is a tradition of shaitan. It is an inheritance of shaitan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning in the Holy Quran that shaitan said about the children of Adam, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Then I will come to them from before them and from behind them and on their right and on their left Listen carefully. Shaitan says, I will come to them from in front of them and behind them and on their right and on their left and you will not find most of them grateful. And the one who forgets the favors of Allah, the one who becomes ungrateful to Allah, then he falls into the same category as Shaitan. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Holy Quran that the opposite of shukur, it is kufr. He is saying in Surah Al-Baqarah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Fazkuruni azkurkum, remember me, and I will remember you. Be grateful to me, and do not make kufr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us everything, and he has not asked us, for anything in return. All he's saying is that we should be like our Holy Prophet والسلام, and be grateful to him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, if you are thankful, I will increase you. Look at this story that the Holy Prophet والسلام, is giving in his Hadith Sharif. He's saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wanted to test three people. A leper, a bald man and a blind man. He sent an angel to the leper and the angel asked, What do you want most in this world? The leper said, To get cure and to have good skin and a good color because people are disgusted by me. The angel touched that man and he was cured of his leprosy. He had good skin and he had a beautiful color. The angel then asked him, What property do you like best? The man said, Camels. So the angel gave him a pregnant she-camel and said, May Allah bless you with this. The angel then went to the bald man and asked, What do you want the most? The bald man said, I want to have hair again because the people are disgusted by my baldness. The angel touched him and he was given beautiful hair. The angel then asked him, What property would you like best? And the man answered, Cattle. So the angel gave him a pregnant cow and said, May Allah bless you with this. Finally, the angel went to the blind man and asked, What do you want most? The blind man said, That Allah may restore my eyesight so that I may see people. The angel touched his eyes and Allah gave him back his eyesight. The angel asked him, What kind of property do you like best? He replied, Sheep. The angel gave him a pregnant sheep. After these incidents, all three pregnant animals gave birth and the men very soon became rich and they had herds of their animals. One valley was filled with camels, one with cattle and one with sheep. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the angel in the form of a leper to the man who used to have leprosy. The angel said to the man, I am a poor man. I lost all my property while traveling. No one can help me except Allah and then you. In the name of the one who gave you such a 
nice color and beautiful skin and so much wealth. Can you give me a camel so I can reach my destination? And that man who used to be a leper said, I am very busy, I can't give you anything. The angel then said, I know you. Didn't you used to be a leper and the people used to be disgusted by you? Weren't you poor and Allah made you rich? And the man said, no, 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 I got this property through inheritance from my grandfathers. The angel said, if you are telling a lie, then let Allah make you as you were before. And the man turned back into a leper. Then the angel, disguised in the shape and appearance of a bald man, went to the bald man and said to him the same as he told the first one, and he also acted the same way and gave the same story. The angel said, if you are telling a lie, then let Allah make you as you were before. And the man turned back into a bald man. The angel, disguised in the shape of a blind man, went to the blind man and said, I am a poor man <coughs> and a traveler whose means of livelihood have been exhausted while on a journey. I have nobody to help me except Allah. And after him, you yourself, I ask you in the name of him who has given you back your eyesight to give me a sheep so that with its help I may complete my journey. The man said, no doubt I was blind and Allah gave me back my eyesight. I was poor and Allah made me rich. So take anything you wish from my property. By Allah, I will not stop you from taking anything of my property which you may take for Allah's sake. The angel replied, keep your property with you. All of you three have been tested and Allah is pleased with you and is angry with your two companions. We must ask ourselves if we have the characteristics of the blind man, the bald man or the leper. If we sit down and ask ourselves honestly, then the answer is going to come to our hearts. We don't have to think so hard. We should look into our lives and see if we are thanking Allah for the blessings He has bestowed on us or if we are being stubborn and ungrateful and fooling ourselves into thinking that we are self-sufficient. And one of the tricks and traps of the ego is to think that we can thank Allah directly without thanking His servants who are helping us. But if we do not thank the ones who have helped us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept our thankfulness. <coughs> Holy Prophet والسلام, said in Hadith Sharif, whoever does not thank the people who has helped him, he has not thanked Allah. Are we thanking the ones who have helped us? Are we showing thankfulness and gratitude to the one who has helped us the most in our life? The one who pulled us out of darkness, the one who has led us to the Sirat al-Mustaqim. Are we showing thankfulness to our Shaykh? And how are we showing thankfulness to our Shaykh? By being stubborn, by being disobedient, by being ungrateful, by being weak, by following our nafs, by listening to our anger, It is through obedience, by having submission, by having muhabbat, by sticking to his way, by being loyal, by respecting what he has left behind. We can fool ourselves into thinking that we are the best servants of Allah, but unless we are being good murids to our shaykh and taking care of whatever he has left us with, we are not reaching anywhere. O believers, O murids, take the advice of Sahib al Sayyid, who said, when we will be thankful servants to our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will increase his favors to us in dunya and ahirat. He will give us the worldly favors and he will give us the peace and enjoyment with it and he will give us the peace of ahirat that we will not get stuck in this dunya. If we don't appreciate his favors, then more may come to you, but more you will suffer then. The more you will feel lonely, and the more you will run away from people because you will think everyone out there is to cheat you and to fool you. 
and then you will be disconnected from Ahirat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that and may He allow us to be counted from amongst His thankful servants. Astaghfirullah, 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 lazim alazim, la ilaha illa wa alhayyul qayyum wa atubu layta. La ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika lah, lahul mulk wa alhamdu yuhin la lukli shayin qadir. La ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika lah, lahul mulk wa alhamdu yuhin la lukli shayin qadir. La ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika lah, lahul mulk wa alhamdu yuhin la lukli shayin qadir. La ilaha illa anta subhana in kutu min al-zalimin. La ilaha illa anta subhana in kutu min al-zalimin. La ilaha illa anta subhana in kutu min al-zalimin. Subuhun kudusun rabbina rabbil malaikata warruh. Subuhun kudusun rabbina rabbil malaikata warruh. Subuhun kudusun rabbina rabbil malaikata warruh. Inna dina inda Allah al-Islam. Qamu salam. Move forward. 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 Here.